From your startup screen, go to the Families section, click on Open, browse to Chapter 6, and open the file Chapter 6 Diffuser Connectors. Once again, this all comes down to planning to make sure that your family works in exactly the right way that you want it to. Here I've got a 3D view open, and I want my duct connector to fix to this surface. From the Create tab, click on Duct Connector. From the Modify tab, we get the option to place on a face or a work plane. I'm going to place this on a face, which is going to be the top face of my diffuser. I can select it by pressing the Tab key if I'm unable to select it initially. But before I place it, let's look at the Options bar. Here I get to define what type of system I connect to. And for this exercise, we'll stay with the supplier. Press Tab to select the face, and it places my duct connector. You can see that the duct connector has a width and a height. We also have an arrow. This arrow is not the flow direction. This arrow is pointing in the direction to which we want to connect my duct. If I select the connector on the Properties palette, we get a range of parameters we can select. It's flow direction. In this example, the flow direction is going to be out as the air flow is moving in the direction of the arrow. We have the system classification that we've already specified and a loss method. Currently it's not defined. Do we want to define a specific loss or a coefficient? If we select specific loss, we can then address that loss under mechanical flow. And under flow, we currently have 0 litres a second. If we want to pick this up in the project, then we need to connect this parameter to a flow parameter, which we can create. But this flow parameter wants to be an instance parameter, as this can change for every single diffuser. Finally, we have the dimensions of the connector, whether it's rectangular, round or oval and its height and width. Well, we could specify the height and width here, but we already have a height and width defined as parameters in the family. So again, I can connect the height and width to the neck width and the neck height. And this is where your planning comes in. You need to make sure that you connect the right parameters to the right connector. Let's just look at the family types and try flexing our model again. Here we have the flow. Notice how the flow has in brackets default next to it. This means that it is an instance parameter, the button that we checked here. And this can now vary for every single instance of this type of family. Whereas the rest of the parameters we have in here are type parameters, meaning they can change only with the type. So let's see what happens when we change the type and click on Apply. Not only does our family flex, but the connector does as well. From your Application button, click on Open, open a Revit project, browse to your Chapter 6 folder, and click on Open. This time we'll load our family into the project. From the View tab, switch Windows back to any view in the family and load the family into the project. This warning message tells us that we can't create a diffuser in the current view as we're in a drafting view. So we need to open Level 1. From the Systems tab, click on Air Terminal. In the Properties palette, notice that we now have the Chapter 6 Diffuser Connectors family available to us. We're placing this family on Level 1 with an offset which we can change and then place the family. 
change the type to place the 300 by 300 and again to place the 1200 by 300. Click on Modify. If I scroll in and select one of the diffusers, we can now see that we can change the flow and we can connect a duct.